Hello there folks and welcome back to my channel and yes it is that time of year again that we all start doing review videos or yearly review videos so again obviously we're going to be looking at what has happened with me throughout the year <coughs> and talking about maybe kind of my plans for next year as well and do please excuse my, my voice I am just getting over a cold don't worry I was so cold, I have been testing myself diligently and yeah, it is just a head cold. It's that time of year and I think with everything kind of isolating and or having been isolating for so long, it's hitting folk a bit harder this year. But that's not what this video is going to be about. But before I get on to the main body of the video itself, if you're enjoying my videos, if you're enjoying my channel, if you can click on that subscribe button, click on that notification bell, leave some likes, leave some comments, it's always really appreciated. And if you'd like to support the channel further, I will post a link to the channel's uh, coffee.com page in the description bar below and then a pinned comment in the comments section. So with that out of the road, on to the actual main purpose of this video, a wee review of what my life has been like as a writer in 2021. I'll also be looking at some of the, the books I've been reading as well. So books I've read, the books I've DNF'd and yeah. So I'll start with the books I DNF'd because again that actually does seem to be the smaller pile. So the one that I have DNF'd and I definitely will not be reading ever again is The Twelve Children of Paris by Tim Willox. So it looks Looks. Uh, and it's essentially it's set in Paris and it centres around the 23rd of August 1572 which was the St. Is it, is it Bartholomew? Uh, yeah, it's the St. Bartholomew Day Massacre <coughs> and the main character and I have no idea how to actually pronounce his, his name it's Matthias Tannhauser. Tannhauser. So the main character anyway, is, is a member of the Knights of Malta or the, the, it's the Spitalers. And he is heading to Paris to find his wife who is heavily pregnant. And while he is there, the St. Bartholomew Day Massacre takes place, which essentially saw larger numbers of the Huguenots in Paris being slaughtered. And I just had to I could not get into this book at all. Really struggled to have any rapport with the characters. And yeah, cause I, I, as a reader, I do like being able to understand the characters have at least some sort of emotional response uh, and have some sort of empathy towards them. Just could not have any empathy whatsoever towards any of the characters. And again, coming from an archaeological and historical background, there were things about in the books that I was just sitting cringing at. Because I think it's, it's at, right at the start of the book, <clears throat> it is mentioned that Matthias has so two pistols and a rifle and okay pistols and rifles did exist in the 16th century but they were very rare to have as mostly something that like the nobility would have or like kings would have access to as it'd be like such a rare thing to see a knight going around Europe with not just one firearm but three. So that kind of sort of pulled me out of the story as well. And I have to admit, it's like, I'd, I'd always thought that the Knights Hospitaller were a bit like the Knights Templar and they were celibate. But from what I looked, at, looked into it as well, that they were the, kind of the lay brothers, or there the, the were different degrees of Knights Hospitaller. So some of them could actually be married, but it was just one of those kind of books that I just could not. 
I could not actually bring myself to act, to feel anything for any of the characters. And it was just a, a real slog to get through. And I, I, I was trying and I wanted to enjoy the book. I wanted to be able to finish it. But I think I ended up kind of giving up okay, a, few, a few chapters in. I think at the point I got to was Matty's wife being taken prisoner by the people who had been sent to kill her. So I think and it's just so that is one that I have definitely DNF'd and I will not be going back to. So I think that I'll, I'll be putting that into the pile for books I'll be taking to the charity shop. In the second book uh, it was June by Frank Herbert. Okay, I've DNF'd it for just now. I will be putting it back on to my bookshelves because I know, I know that this is a classic and I think the fact that, yeah, it has went on and inspired so many other sci-fi, it's inspired science fantasy and I know that this is one of the, <coughs> the influences for Star Wars. So that's part of the reason why I did pick this up when I saw it in the bookshop. Because again, I'm a Star Wars fan. I've been a Star Wars fan for over 20 years now. First watched Star Wars when I was 10. And yeah, so that's part of the reason why I wanted to read it. And I knew that the movie was coming out. And so I tried reading it and... I have to admit, I really, really struggled. I just could not get into it at all. But I know this could be one of those books that I may struggle with initially, but if I go back to it at a later date, I might I just totally get into it. But I'm not also planning that with the movie now being out, I might try and see if I can actually watch the movie. And I know the movie will probably not be nowhere near as good as the book but I think it, if I watch the movie it might actually help me get into the book. It might actually help me understand what's, go what's going on, who the characters are, what they're like. Yeah, so be one that I am <coughs> doing nothing for just now but planning on returning to at some point. Uh, but I think because I was trying to read both these books and really struggling with them, I, th I think this is what slowed me down as a reader this year. Because I think this year I only managed to read about eight books. When I think I managed to eight, read about 12 last year. But again, one that I'm definitely getting rid of, one that I'm holding on to and trying to read again later on. Because I know, okay. It's a widely, widely recognised classic. Yeah, June is a widely recognised classic and it's highly influential, so I will definitely try and get back to that and try and see if I can actually get through it at another date. And I did actually manage to read some non fiction this year, which I am trying to do more of because I have a ton of non fiction books on a specific bookshelf in my house, which I really need to get through. So the ones that I managed to get through this year, <coughs> the first one being Sea Wolves, I'm actually a little bit better. So it's Sea Wolves, which is a look at Scots who were actually pirates. So that's kind of, that was an interesting route. So I was kind of looking at a lot of different Pirates, different Scottish pirates, and uh, their impact on piracy during the golden age of, pi of pirates. Then the next one I wrote, I read was Macbeth, true story by Fiona Watson, and she is. She I know she was a history professor at Stirling University. So she does quite, go write quite a lot of books on Scottish history. So that's the one that I definitely sat and read because again, Macbeth is one of those characters of Scottish history that 
just about everything is heard of, they've heard the name, uh, but I think a lot of people probably just know of what happens in the Shakespeare play. So it's definitely an interesting chance to actually sit and read what we actually know of them historically. So that's a good one. <coughs> and one that was probably kind of quite relevant just now what, uh, was The Return of the Black Death by Susan Scott and Christopher Duncan. And I was kind of looking, I was just trying to take a fresh look at the Black Death and possible causes. Don't quite agree with everything they came out with, but again, it's still an interesting and relevant read. <coughs> and the books, or oh, the, the fiction books I managed to read this year. <coughs> and the one that, that I have not long finished was The, Ex the Expedition of Humphrey Clinker. I'm trying to remove the book a bit because the light's kind of reflecting on it quite a bit. So that's The Expedition of Humphrey Clinker by Tobias Smollett. Again, one of the, probably quite an overlooked Scottish author, so it was sort of a book that I'd read when I was at university doing my undergrad, and I was doing archaeology and Scottish literature, so that was one of the books that was on the, the syllabus. And it was quite, quite good just to be able to go back and give it a reread and just remind myself of when I was undergrad. So, book that I read this year, another one. <coughs> Uh, that's Dark Encounters, a collection of uh, ghost stories. So this is one that's very much had a, a, a Scottish feel. So it's by William Croft Dickinson. Um, <coughs> very much uh, plays on the whole ghost story tradition that you find in Scotland. Very dark, very gothic, very atmospheric with a lot of history and folklore in it, so that was definitely a good choice to be reading over the winter months. It's just, again, a book to be curled up with when, un under a warm blanket, with something hot to drink, some snacks, and especially a good read over a dark night. And, and I also read The Toymaker, or Toymakers, by Robert Binsdale. So this is predominantly set in London. Uh, just, and I think it starts just before the First World War starts. And it follows a family, it follows a young girl who escapes to London because she's pregnant and ends up working in Papa Jack's Emporium. And it follows her adventures as she becomes part of her life of the Emporium and what happens kind of in their lives as the 20th century barrels forward. And another classic that probably is what a book that everyone has to read is The Colour Purple by Alice Walker. So it's again set in the deep south of the US and it follows the life of a young black woman called Celie and her relationships and struggles and how she comes to terms with life. So again, <coughs> definitely a classic of American fiction and one that I would always recommend people to sit and read because I actually was given this by a friend, one I hadn't read, this is a book I hadn't read until this year, <coughs> but I would again after reading it definitely recommend to anyone who wants to get into American fiction? And I think the, the last book that I'll talk about is probably the last book I'll mention of the books that I read this year. And it was Augustine by Kai Miller. And it is set in a fictionalised version of Augustine in Jamaica. Spelt slightly differently from the Augustine in real life, because I think in the, August, the real Augustine it's spelled as two words. It's Augustine is one word. And it essentially looks at events over a single day in August. But as flashbacks and the elements of history of 
different things have happened in the past in the area and how it's all tied together and how it's all how history, the present and the future are all sort of kind of meld together and are all connected. There's also the fact that Ed Miller is also, is also a graduate of the University of Glasgow. So he is a Glasgow a University of Glasgow alumni, just like myself. So it's definitely quite again, it's quite a, a very atmospheric book, a very emotive book, one that could definitely pulls you in and takes you along for quite an emotional journey. Um, one that I definitely enjoyed reading this year. So those are all the books that I've read this year. So that's the whole event of what I was what I've been doing as a reader this year. And what I've been doing as a writer, okay, I've not gotten anywhere near as much writing done as I should have. Again, life just seems to have been getting in the way. Been probably spending far too much time at the day job. But I did manage to get to, to take part in the Breaking Angus Book Festival, which was definitely a, 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 a good thing to be able to just get away for a few days, take part in what I hopefully will, which I, which I do hope is going to be an event that will be taking part again in the future. And I think this was the, the first event that I'd taken part in as a writer for about two years and seven months. So I think the last event that I took part in would have been the Paisley Comic Con in the April of 2019. So yeah, it's just, again, it's just trying to get back into taking part in events, especially after everything has happened. So while I was up there, I was actually asked if I would like to come back and take part in next year's event. So fingers crossed, touch wood, everything will go to plan and I'll be back up and breaking next year. Hopefully it'll be a bigger, better event. And so like fingers crossed for that. But it also gives me an incentive that I can actually get my backside in gear, get my finger out and actually get the second novel in my Ravenshine trilogy finished, edited and published and out there for next year's event. Because it'd be good to be able to take even more new products or new books up to the breaking next year. So even though things have been kind of a bit quiet on the right front, I am hoping that, yeah, that next year I will have more books written and published for next year and hoping that I will be taking part in my second Breaking Angus Book Festival. And I probably will start looking for other events that I can take part in next year. So hopefully next year will be more productive with more things happening, more things out. And again, I will still be continuing with my book reviews and looking probably looking, looking at a more Scottish fiction over the next year. Uh, so again, if you have any ideas of Scottish novels that you maybe want me to look at, definitely let me know in the description bar below and I'll try and see what I can do. But I do still have a pile of novels that I picked up from Abbey, the Abbey Bookshop that I still need to get through. So hopefully I'll be able to start getting through them next year and letting you all see what they're like. And yeah, so again, with, the, with this channel, as I have rebooted it this year, and I am planning on having more of a Scottish feel, Scottish slant on this channel, I will be doing more Scottish themed videos on this channel over the next, over the next coming year. So yeah, so that's always something to, to look forward to, to kind of work towards and try and achieve. So if, again, I, if there's any th events coming up that I am going to be able to take part in, I will be letting you know as soon as I know. And yeah, so fingers crossed that next year will be bigger and better and more productive. So I'm going to try and wrap, that, wrap up this channel just now before my 
voice sides that actually totally give out. But hopefully you will all have enjoyed this video. Hopefully you will enjoy my channel and all everything that's coming next year. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.